I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Welcome, family. Welcome to this very special episode of Live Your Best Life. I am Liz Wright. Thank you so much for being with us. As we start today's very special show, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, as well as having my incredible husband, Wesley Wright, joining me, he's actually been talked into joining me on this show today. We also have joining us this side of the camera, the producer of the show, the amazing Holly Brunson, who is actually going to step in today on behalf of you guys and start to ask Wes and I some questions, things that many people have wanted to have answers to. So we just pray as we start that you will enjoy the conversation, that you'll get a little bit more insight into who we actually are, the real us, behind the scenes, and that you'll get treasures and nuggets from what we share for your own life. So, so as we begin, over to you, Holly. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. No, it's, I'm, everyone, I'm really excited to get to be with you today. And I've known Liz for about two years now, and it's such a fun thing for me because I feel like I have gotten to see and experience a really good and big God, and Liz continuously tells me stories, and I just feel like I sit there and like, okay, God is bigger than I thought. <laughs> so I love how she challenges who I think God is, and it is, I'm continuously getting challenged into understanding him to be way bigger than I realized. And so I was like, what is it like to be married to you? And I wanted to just like, what did it look like for you and Wes to get to uh, get together in that process? So I was like, I'm, I purposely haven't asked a lot of questions because I want to get to hear it with everyone else as well, kind of for the first time. So Liz, I know you've told me just a little bit about when you were, you were out in California and you felt like the Lord started to talk to you a little a bit about a transition in life. So can you kind of just start there in the story and, and let people know what was going on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and lots of people have asked me this question too. I've shared little bits before, but, and obviously Wes will jump in and share his side of the story. Um, but yeah, I was living in Hollywood. And I was working with Sean Bowles and the team for that's now Expression 58. And uh, I was helping to develop the community and lay a prophetic foundation, really, praying for the establishing of a kingdom work in the midst of the Hollywood Gate. And during the end of my time there, all the prophets who are not allowed to do this um, would grab hold of me before every every time we would do a service or a conference they would grab hold of me and start prophesying that I was about to meet my husband which as everybody knows out there you are not allowed to do but they did and to the point where and you know who you are and you're you listening <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and they, so I would just like hey, stop it you're making me weird but oh but I did start to listen because it was not one or two times, it was lots and lots of times. And then I um, started to get prophetic words that I was being called by the Lord to go back to England to meet my husband and because there was going to be a move of the Spirit in England and the Lord was repositioning me. My heart had been so invested in Hollywood that I thought I was going to be living there, you know, for the rest of my life, but the Lord had other plans. And so, long story cut, very short, um, I got the blessing of the leadership there. The Lord had already spoken to Sean and the team that I was being called back to England. And so I did. So I came back in the August of 2011, I think it was, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, just really didn't know what the Lord wanted me to do, you know, next. But I just knew I had to be in England. Came back in the August. And then a dear friend of mine um, contacted me and said I was being invited to go to a prayer meeting in Oxford University, which was to do with praying for, it was like re repenting for what had been spread out internationally through the education sphere from Oxford University under the empire model, and to pray for the establishing of kingdom. So the values of God heart, God's heart would be exported out 
from the education gate of Oxford University. So I was in this prayer meeting, it was very serious. We were, you know, really feeling the Lord's heart on the matter. It's obviously, it's a huge subject for a whole other show. And in the middle of me being under the power of the, the, of the anointing and just flowing in the, in the revelation of God's heart concerning this, in walked Wes. <laughs> about halfway through the meeting about halfway through the meeting yeah that's right so i was actually being presented by the father very well because i was shining and flowing <laughs> in the anointing but then i got really distracted as this guy walked in <laughs> you noticed him right away he stood out to you and he walked i in. did yeah i noticed him really well like he was extremely good looking <laughs> and came in halfway. That's, <laughs> that's a blessing <laughs> yeah so um yeah, so I mean, I, was, I tried not to be distracted, but I was. And that was how we initially met. Wes, what was your first impression of her? when you was she, So she was speaking um, at the event when you walked in? Well, that wasn't my first impression because I'd actually seen Liz uh, about a month and a half prior to that. Oh. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this bit. Yeah, no, I didn't see Wes at this meeting, but he saw me. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'd, I'd had a conversation with the Lord um, four or five months prior to that and um and uh, it was a probably not a faith-filled conversation where i was saying you know lord i'm this old and i'm not married and uh, i'm not that bad of a catch you know I'm, I'm okay don't look like the back end of a bus i'm reasonably you know reasonably uh okay and uh and he said to me um within the next six months look out for a lady who looks like this and listed a number of qualities, physical qualities and also professional qualities and characteristics. Um, so funny enough, when I went to the conference in August and um, uh, halfway through the meeting, Liz came in with two, two friends and I turned around and I saw her and obviously she's an attractive lady, so I, I noticed her. Um, but it was a, a very strange feeling because when I noticed her, I, I knew that I was attracted to her, but there was an underlying knowing which was extremely strange mm. I mean, i've been attracted to other ladies in, in the past but i've never experienced a knowing the i felt like i knew her before i'd even met her it was it was really very strange and 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 it, and it really sort of was quite a marked experience for me at that point yeah i had the same thing actually you reminded me when i looked at wes i mean i was immediately attracted to him but i i remember thinking he was really really familiar which was so, it, again it was just very different and then just uh, adding a little bit there on our wedding day we, we will jump back to the beginning of the story again in a second but on our wedding day Wes read out of his journal the list that were the attributes of the wife that he wanted and in detail and he'd never shown it to me until our wedding day and literally in minute detail it was a description of me Wow. And I just, I yeah. nearly fell over. I couldn't believe it. So, yeah. It, it was, uh, it was, I don't know how you call it, a, not a type of list, but it was, it was a list of um, qualities that I'd uh, chatted to the Lord about over a number of years. And, um, and we came to this, you know, this list of things that both physical, both spiritual, um, that were included. And um, so it was, it was a list that I'd made with the Lord yeah. in my quiet yeah. time. Yeah. And, and another thing I think that's really important and, and, you know, hopefully for the family out there, this will be a blessing to any of you that are trusting the Lord for a wife or a husband. Both Wes and I have realized that we were both following Jesus's direction for our lives. We were both in, in the ministry that he was calling both of us to Wes in the marketplace, which we'll go a little bit into more detail on and, and me in full-time ministry, you know, at that time in Hollywood but we were literally following him step by step by step. Mm. And at the exactly perfect time, the Lord caused our lives to intersect and we met and we realized that, you know, we realized. And then within, so we met on the 1st of October, 2011 at that prayer meeting, Oxford University. You and then met. like, did you guys get to have a conversation then? Um, yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, we did. Well, not, I not prophesied a over him. As prophets meet, you know, you prophesy over each other. <laughs> well, that, that was an interesting, um, very interesting time because um, 
getting to that prayer meeting was quite difficult for me. I think oh, yeah. the enemy had other plans. Um, so I, I planned to pick up my, um, my spiritual mentor's um, son uh, from Heathrow Airport and then come back round through Oxford and stop off at the prayer meeting. And on the way to the prayer meeting, uh, sorry, on the way to pick up um, James, who's my mentor's uh, son, um, I was in, a, in a, a queue, you say, backed up in the States. And we were backed up in this queue and I was behind a big truck. And um, I happened to look in my mirror and I saw this truck coming up behind me and I thought he's not going to stop. And um, so I, I made a quick evasive action and went up the grass verge on the left and, and the truck caught me at the back and, and smashed the back in. And it screeched to a halt and it screeched to a halt about a foot away from the other truck. And so when I looked at it and looked at the damage to the car, I thought, my goodness. And my parents were in the back of the car. I was in the front of the car. And I was like, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the amazing thing was guys in, in one of the, um, one of the offices there, they ran out, they saw what had happened and they hoovered out all my car with the glass. They put a, a, a plastic window in the back. I mean, Who when does that, that happen? Right, right. <laughs> and they all helped me and, and did everything for me and taped it all up. And, and I was right, right to go off to the, um, the prayer meeting. I didn't think I was going to make it, but I actually made it halfway through. So uh, it was amazing to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next lovely part was that literally within a couple of weeks after us meeting, I was scheduled to be with another friend of mine out at Bethel in Reading, in California. I was like, scheduled to be there for a few weeks for support and ministry and what have you. And Wes had also prearranged to go to come out for Leaders Advanced Training mm. Conference. Um, yeah. And so we ended up being in Reading at the same time. Um, so we actually had our first unofficial date in Hebrews. Coffee shop in Bethel. Tell me about the unofficial first date. I want to hear the details. <laughs> I played hard to get. Um, of course. Yeah. <laughs> she, tell me how she played hard to get. I want to hear about it. <laughs> well, I mean, I thought that she liked me. And, you know, you, as a man, you try and sort of pick up those. Men are not particularly very good at picking up signals from women unless they're really, you know, overt signals. Plus, he'd been um, told that I don't date, which I hadn't for 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> but that was all information up to that point. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was expecting to feel a bit of connection and, uh, you know, just to sort of get a few little hints that, that she liked me. And um, well, she actually played a little bit cold, which, <laughs> which I was a bit surprised. I actually went back to a friend of mine who was, we both came out together. And he says, how did it go, Wes? How did it go? And I said, no, I don't think she likes me. It's a bit strange. So I was a bit perplexed. <laughs> yeah. When did you know she liked you? When did that become apparent? Uh, that wasn't until I got back to the UK. And, um, and she sent me a text. And um, it was something like, um, oh, your face is, is, is really, really nice or really good looking and I thought oh well that's a good sign you wouldn't say someone's good looking or you like someone's face unless actually you like their face yeah. so that was a good clue that is a good clue that's a good mm. clue. so so when did um now that you kind of know she likes your face and you're starting to um what did the dating because I mean like we've got like a reformer and a mystic and that is <laughs> yeah. an interesting combination to date and get Oh together. normal is like yeah. interesting. <laughs> I know and I want to get into that late like in other yeah. episodes. I want to like we can, go, we can be more vulnerable. Yeah. <laughs> but like how did what was it like for you guys to start to date and just to get to know each other? Um well I think I'd also just, just, just like to share another little story, actually, um, of being in Bethel. Um, and the Lord had, the Lord had um, basically said to me about Liz to pursue. And, um, and I remember um, struggling with that and going, what do you mean? How, how does that outwork? And so I spoke to Tom, Pastor Tom, uh, who's my spiritual mentor. I said, yeah, I'm having this bit of an issue with, you know, how do I go about pursuing and does it really mean this and does it really mean that? And, and I said, would you just pray and just see what the Lord says? Because he's really good at hearing the Lord. And so he went away and he came back and, and he said, um, yeah, yeah, where's the Lord spoke to me. And uh, he said um, something very clear and very concise. He said, 
what part of the word pursue do you not understand? <laughs> so, so, so that was another clue as to, okay, right, I need to actually do something. I actually need to pursue. So, uh, What did pursuit look like then? Well, um, actually, in, in the October, uh, first October meeting, the word pursue uh, meant to uh, sit at the end of the meeting and not move and wait for Liz to come to me because that's what the Lord said that she would do. Um, and that's exactly what happened. She came over and then she prayed and prophesied. So for that part, it meant waiting. But then at a different stage, it actually meant taking some sort of lead and then trying to be romantic as a, you know, as a man can. <laughs> yeah, lovely. We, did, we just started texting more and more and having more and more conversations. And obviously in being in Reading together, we were both out of our normal worlds. And so we had time, you know, and I was able to, we were just able to spend time getting to know each other and starting to share our God stories and our testimonies. And it was. That was a real, yeah. That, yeah, that was, was something that we did quite a bit, actually. Yeah. We would share different God stories. And, and then when Liz would share a story, I'd go, oh, yeah, I've, I had an encounter with the Lord. Even though I'm a reformer, I, you know, I've had encounters. And mm -hmm. um, Well, you do what you do because of encounters. Well, I, 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 I do what I do, and I am who I am because of encounters with the Lord. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was fun to share different perspectives and different experiences and different encounters and what they meant and how they'd shaped each other and how, they, how it shaped my character shape my values and yeah, yeah that was fun it was amazing and we, as we got to know each other i st i could see that wes is absolutely integrity you know like he's a reformer through and through like i always laugh and say it's like literally living with Will, william wilberforce like there's no off button and there just isn't you know he just carries the justice heart of god all the time but and there's such a strength, you know, of who the, 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 uh, the compassion of God is expressed through Wes in a way of wanting to see justice, you know, established across the world, really. And so I started to see the qualities of God in him. And I loved that. I mean, I was just attracted to who he is as a whole package, as a, you know, a supernaturally natural man um, who has a really deep relationship with the Father and is doing everything he's done. He, and he does because of that relationship. And one of the, you know, one of the things that I really fell in love with and, you know, and has continued over the years really is um, the fact that Wes's obedience to follow the Lord's direction in his life has been very costly. You know, like obviously years ago, Wes was a multimillionaire property developer amongst many other accomplishments. And when the Lord started to call him out into his you know, primary calling in life, it required Wes to literally sow everything. Well, that had been preceded by years of relationship because you don't just do that. You know what I mean? You have to be undergirded by a very deep relationship with God and a profound love for God and security in him to be able to let go of millions of pounds, you know, of, of your security and your accomplishments, particularly as a man. Well, for me, that was so attractive because it meant that it was total integrity and complete courage and security in God to be able to do something like that. So there were, as we began to get to know each other, I started, you know, this is a mystic and a reformer. These are the things that attract you to each other oh, yeah. with that kind of worldview. But I started to think he was the most amazing man because he'd given up everything to follow God. You know, to some people that might seem like craziness you know without the backstory it probably would but when you know the relationship that Wes has and the qualities of God's nature that are in Wes that was like that was it for me it was like game over <laughs> <laughs> it started dating though it was a pretty it was a pretty it's thick bad. dating but between engagement when mm -hmm. did you when did you uh, how long was that well um <laughs> we Officially started to date at the end of November, 2011. Because I kissed Wes, so it was official. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Liz, you were the pursuer on that one. <laughs> and so yeah, that's, then... <laughs> that's a very easy clue to pick up for a man. <laughs> um, a good clue, Liz. So. <laughs> um, and then it was the uh, first week in January of 2012. So about a month that it was about five weeks yeah, yeah. It was You're like it wasn't a month it was five weeks let's clarify but it was actually i think it was five weeks to the day um that, that i asked Liz to marry me 
yeah yeah well we had a deep but it preceded friendship yeah. and then a very fast courtship <laughs> but we did knew you want didn't share, we, did we you didn't want to share uh, what happened when we got engaged yeah and then two oh, days yeah. after oh yeah no you 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 yeah i'll jump in but no, i want people to hear you okay okay if you don't mind well okay so so yeah i, I felt it was right um i mean I, I, you, you hear a lot of good counsel which is you know don't don't jump in fast and you know wait for two years and, and blah, blah 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 but you know we weren't you know physically we weren't young you know um so uh, and also um it was directed by the lord and yeah. um it was very supernatural and yeah. i knew absolutely 100 percent that liz was my wife um so i asked her to marry me and it was amazing because <laughs> We just, uh, she said yes, and then we managed a quick oh, hug. Wait, I want to hear the proposal. Tell me how you proposed to her. I just want a little bit of that story. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't hugely romantic. It was accidental. <laughs> no, 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 well, it wasn't accidental, no, because I, I'd got this all planned out, and I'd got to sort of, I was going to ask her father, because her, her dad's an amazing man, you know, and I wanted to respect and honour him, and, and, you know. And um, we were just sat on the couch in my, in my house then. And, um, and the Lord said, no. Oh, uh, I haven't even practiced what I was going to do and say. And so it kind of fumbled that. Did you have it a ring? I didn't even have a ring at the time. No, oh, okay. I got it planned. <laughs> no, I, I had it planned. But it, it just came up, you know, it was like, no, oh my. So anyway, I, I did. I asked, I asked Liz. And then we managed to get a, a hug and a very quick kiss before we then absolutely were in roars of laughter and we just got completely filled with the spirit and we were rolling on the floor laughing i don't know for how long maybe an yeah, hour or something yeah it's, yeah just yeah, completely just completely full of the joy of the lord yeah yeah in the spirit and uh yeah it was it was it was an amazing that's the way to and celebrate. joyful time what did you say so what did you that's say definitely like? a way to celebrate after an engagement so it was it, amazing it felt like a, it felt like you know a seal of approval yeah of of the lord's heart yeah you know, that, that um and yeah. it was such a joyous occasion such a joyous so yeah yeah and it's so beautiful you know dating each other with jesus in the middle of your relationship you know where you're being spirit-led and obviously the the people we make ourselves accountable to our own true relationships in our life are all all could all they all got it in the spirit mm -hmm. you know it was very clear for everybody so mm -hmm. and we knew you know like you always said you know we're not 20 and so we do have a little bit of life experience to be able to discern character and and know what the lord's saying and so yeah it was amazing and then it was like what i said it was the seal of approval we could feel the celebration going on in yeah. heaven it yeah. was so amazing it was, it was amazing. so amazing and then two days later <clears throat> was um, did you want to share your perspective yeah, on no, that no, you, you share this really well so. okay i'll share and then wes can jump in but um two days later we'd been to some dear friends of ours daughter's christening because wes is the godfather and um we'd we were on we'd come back and i was just about to leave and to go back to my house in the north of england and um and wes came in and he said to me i just feel like i'm supposed to apologize to you for what you went through in your first marriage all those years ago and um and i i just spent 12 years with the lord completely set apart flying in ministry taking care of my daughter you know happy woman working through all my stuff and i thought i was healed and i was very largely but there was a part that the lord wanted to bring through wes and so he as wes walked towards me and he 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 said to me i'm so sorry for what happened to you and he said if i could have i would have stopped i would have stopped it Obviously, I went through a lot of abuse, you know, in my previous marriage. And as Wes said that, he moved towards me to put his arms around me. And he just gently touched my head, didn't you? Like, mm. you, he was releasing the anointing and beginning to pray for me. And the power of God just hit me. I fell down on the floor, into a ball on the floor. This pain mm. that was in the core, literally felt like it was in the core of me, just came out. And I began to sob and just wail. And Wes came on down on the floor, put his arms around me, just began to rock me. And he was going, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. And then as he did, 
both of us suddenly were catapulted into a joint encounter together. We found ourselves together experiencing the whole thing before the Father. And supernaturally, we began to speak our wedding vows to each other, supernaturally, just pouring out our commitment to each other, what we wanted as our life together in our marriage, union. And it was all before the Father, literally as like overflowing supernaturally. And then our spirits became intertwined. It looked like a DNA strand, didn't it? Mm, And the Father... And you both both were experiencing this. We were both experiencing it together. And then Father came in the middle of us. It was a three-stranded, like a DNA cord of our spirits dancing and moving and turning. Mm. And we knew, we we then came out of the experience completely stunned. And we knew we'd been married in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Supernaturally. And then, I mean, we were just, it was, we were crying and it was, Fell with joy and completely blown away and didn't really have any understanding of what had just happened to us other than it had happened and we were supernaturally married but to honor each other you know because of the speed of the process of our relationship we felt to just wait you know so we actually got married in April in 2012 so this happened January 2012 and so we just waited, to, so we spent more time getting to know each other on an emotional level, just, you know, getting to know each other's personalities, and then eventually we got married in the April. So we did everything correctly because we wanted to have a blessed marriage and to do things, you know, according to God's wisdom, because Wes had waited, you know, and I had been set apart for 12 years and totally put back together by the Lord from all the pain and the devastation the stuff of my life so we got that far so and then because we chose to do that there was a grace to behave ourselves you know like there was a, that the Lord put on so that we would get that everything would be blessed because we wanted the fullness of a kingdom marriage you know it was like literally what is we your wanted to honor each other as well we and, did yeah and just respect and um and actually act in love really yeah yeah, yeah. And I felt incredibly safe in Wes's honour of, of that and of, of him, you know, um, really wanting those boundaries to be in place. And so, you know, we were wildly attracted to each other, you know, and just the intensity and the, you know, so in love. And so, you know, that's not an easy war being totally real and honest and vulnerable, as people know, but oh, it's not actually worth supposed it. to be easy. <laughs> no, right, yeah, right. But it was worth it. It's worth it. And yeah, so yeah. yeah, and so and I think the years that followed, you know, have not been easy because of principally what Wes is called to do, which is reformation in the marketplace and the financial sector in the marketplace, mm-hmm. to bring in an economy that's you know, different economic offerings that are full of the love of God, full of the values of 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 God's heart and so that's been an interesting journey of itself and I think the way that the Lord married us in heaven put a amongst many other things you know that we'll one day fully understand but it was such a phenomenal grace but it gave us a protection didn't it Mm -hmm. in our relationship because there was such a oneness such a togetherness that you could feel was unbreakable you know even when we didn't agree and you know very quickly after we both got married we both realized oh, we're really different you know? <laughs> and we've had to learn and we're always learning how to to understand each other because we we're 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 opposite spectrums really aren't we but we're, yeah. we're we're two completely different facets of the revelation of love like Wes is all about justice and I'm all Righteous about and yeah righteousness and fairness and I'm all about compassion and and love you know and um and and they're two sides of the same coin but they're very different in expressions and so we've had to understand each other's language and um and so that's been a journey so the lord's been he's put a real protection on our relationship with supernatural but i also believe that it's it's for everyone you know when one of us has experienced something it's the testimony of jesus right which is the spirit of prophecy so it provides an invitation for other people to enter into that and we have actually had times where we've that was led us to release that in public and people just get blasted, you know, in their marriage relationships and, you know, so same Holy Spirit. I'm curious with, like, I just, I know like, I want to get to hear more about like, they like, like in, in another episode hearing about how you guys brought your lives together, having, you know, really led very distinctive and powerful lives and I get to hear that. But I, would you guys feel comfortable just because like, 
your heart for marriage and what you said the Lord has given us, um, that ability to release that over people for that grace. Is that something that you would kind of want to just pray over and, and release over the people who are listening today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to do that. Do you want to yeah, you feel okay right. to do that? Yeah. I mean, I think even just sharing the testimony of Jesus, you know, what he's done in our life is going, I know that lots of you out there, family, are going to be feeling the presence of Holy Spirit on what we're saying, you know, and it will give you hope that there is more, there is more. And, and Jesus, you know, for those of us that are maybe um, not so aware that he absolutely wants to be in the center of our relationships. Absolutely. You know, he created marriage. It's his idea. Right. And so um, he wants to be in the center of it. He wants to release his grace. He wants the culture of our marriage to reflect the values of his heart. So, so yeah, let's do that in closing. Let's do that. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Um, Why don't you lead? Okay. 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 So Holy Spirit. Yeah. Shoo, golly. Wow, I can feel the presence of Jesus. Jesus, we just come in agreement right now. Thank you. Um, we're so thankful for what you did for us. We're so thankful for that protection, that incredible experience that you gave us all those years ago. And we come in agreement right now for the same grace. Holy, wow that same experience to be felt by everyone listening. Yes. Lord, we, we thank you for a revival of marriages. We thank you for the, the intention of your heart, the dream that you have in your heart for every single married person listening. And even we agree this for those that are not yet married, that would love to be married, that they would experience kingdom marriage the way that you intended. They would live. I just, I have such faith that you are bringing our relationships, our marriage relationships to a whole new level in this hour. And, uh, and so we agree, we agree with you for this to be the experience of every single person watching or listening to this show right now, that they would step into this as they turn their heart towards you, that you will take them in, that you will restore their marriages, you will deepen their marriages, you will show them how to walk with you in the context of their marriage, you will begin to breathe into them the vision that you have, that you had for them, for their marriage union from before the foundation of the earth, and that they would live in it in fullness. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, just a little. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for, thank you for my wife. It was amazing. And uh, thank you for our marriage. And uh, Father, I ask for a, a blessing on all those that are watching on their marriages. A blessing of peace and love and connection, understanding deep connection with each other Lord. and for those that are watching that uh, are yet to marry or who have been married and are not married now I pray a grace a mm. deep grace over their hearts mm. and a steadying of their emotions and assist them Lord to keep their eyes on you and to follow your purpose and your plan yeah. as when I followed your purpose and your plan in your time I met my wife. So I pray a blessing on you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, we agree. We agree. Amen. So Holly, thank you so much. Thanks. It was such a lot of fun. We'll have to do this again. I have so many more questions. I want to know what it's like for the <laughs> to be in marriage. So <laughs> well, we'll definitely do more of this. And I just and a huge thank you to my amazing husband mm -hmm. for agreeing to come this side of the camera because he never does. So rarely. Rare, rarely, very, very rarely. Yeah, very rarely. And thank you all for listening. And just know that I'm carrying you, we are carrying you in our hearts every day and praying for you and look forward to being with you again next week. God bless.